and that's mostly because I was really terrible at it my first year. Making mistakes doesn't feel good all the time, so they really need to be around someone that they trust. I need to be able to teach, our classroom needs to allow for learning, and everyone needs to be safe. I need to be able to keep everyone safe. Be that sturdy leader and show that you can stay calm amidst the storm. I don't know what I'm, where I'm going with this, but you see what I'm going with. Hi everyone, today we are going to talk all things classroom management. This is one of my favorite topics. So thank you so much for being here. If you're new here, I am a seventh year, third grade teacher in Maine. My name's Victoria and I'm also a mom to a one-year-old baby boy and I am having a blast. Um, I'm so happy that you're here and that you're going along in this journey with me. I love talking about classroom management. It is one of the topics that I am the most passionate about, and that's mostly because I was really terrible at it my first year. I put a lot of energy and time and resources into learning all the things I could about classroom management, and I have felt like recently I've gotten pretty good at it. Am I perfect? No. Do I have no problems in my classroom? No, but I'm going to share with you all just some of the things that work in my classroom that help me. And the big three things, like the overview of what we'll be chatting about today is just first, just teacher emotional regulation. Like how do I regulate my emotions when things are getting hard? Two, just the classroom community because the community is a big part of behavior management and classroom management. And then three, I'm just gonna chat about some strategies today. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, let's chat classroom community. So the classroom community is the building block of your classroom management. You want your community to feel welcoming and engaging and exciting for your kids in order for them to buy in to wanting to be there, wanting to participate, wanting to be them their best and being willing to open their hearts to yours and being willing to take risks and make mistakes and do that scary work that sometimes is learning. Learning doesn't feel good all the time. Making mistakes doesn't feel good all the time. So they really need to be around someone that they trust and they feel loved by to take those risks to learn. Think about it like, do you really want to be in front of someone that you don't think is cheering you on when you're doing something really hard? Not really. Like you want to be in a space and in a community where you know well, no matter what you do, you will feel welcomed to make those mistakes, learn along the way, and that no matter what, you will be loved and accepted for what you do. So that's why classroom community is so important. So in that classroom community piece, I do like three key things to help build a classroom community. First thing is I try to at the beginning of the school year, but you can do this anytime. I did this last year after I came back from maternity leave, um, and you can do it anytime, is establish classroom jobs. And by jobs, I do not mean like teacher helper and door closer and stuff like that. I mean, say what your job as a teacher is and what their job as a student is. They need to know that you have a job and what your job entails and they have a job and what their job entails. Otherwise, it's kind of like, well, we're here, but what's it for? So for me, I'll try and share like a picture of our anchor chart that we made, but I have three jobs for myself and they are, I need to be able to teach, our classroom needs to allow for learning, and everyone needs to be safe. I need to be able to keep everyone safe. Those are my three jobs. Their three jobs are to allow others to learn, slash for Mrs. Lee to teach, 
two, to learn, <laughs> that's the big one, and three, to make safe choices. When I establish those three jobs for each of us, it's something that I continue to refer back to and it's like just the groundwork of why our classroom is important and why we do things the way that we do. After I do that, then I take on making classroom promises or classroom values. Um, and we think about what matters to our class and things like that. I'll try and show like a picture of what we came up with, but a few of the things that we did this year were like, keep our classroom clean, organized and beautiful. Um, and be respectful learners, um, make our classroom a welcoming space, um, always be kind to each other. Things like that are the things that we came up with for classroom promises and they were based off of what our jobs were. We know our job is to make safe choices. So what? how can we do that in our classroom? We know our job is to learn. So how can we do that in our classroom? Well, we can be respectful learners. We can be kind. We can make our classroom welcoming because if we're welcoming, then we're more likely to be able to learn. Another one is to be creative, take risks and make mistakes. And we're gonna learn by doing those things. So first, make jobs. Second, establish that those classroom values or promises. And then the third big thing with classroom community is just really emphasizing social emotional learning throughout the year especially in those first six weeks, but throughout the year. Um, take the time during morning meeting to discuss just some specific values that help you learn and grow. Take the time to read picture books. Those are my favorite ways to talk about social emotional learning. It just emphasizes good key qualities, but doesn't take a huge amount of time out of your day. So if you're ever interested in like a video of some of my favorite picture books and topics with that, I can definitely chat with you about that. But I think that taking that extra time to teach social emotional learning will really benefit you later on in the school year if you emphasize it and you really build some understanding that you are there to help them to your classroom community is built around having a growth mindset. Your classroom community is built around um, having empathy. Your classroom community is built around understanding that you'll get into arguments, but ways that you can solve those arguments. We use um, things like zones of regulation to help with that. And I really do like the zones. Um, yeah, and then I also use a lot of things that I've learned personally through just gentle parenting and then like Instagram accounts and stuff like that, um, that really helps me. So those are my key things with classroom community. So after classroom community, like the next key thing with building and having a good classroom management is making sure that you have your own teacher regulation skills. Like if you, if kids are going to get frustrating sometimes <laughs> like sometimes you just will not understand why they are acting the way that they are acting and you need to be able to kind of be that sturdy leader and show that you can stay calm amidst the storm that you are able to stand your ground you know the expectations you know your job and you are going to keep them safe even when this turbulence arises so stand up be that sturdy leader and make those hard choices even when things feel really frustrating for you and don't like i try i don't think i've ever yelled at a class you take your second you say your mantras, you say, I am a good teacher. These kids are having a hard time. Their hard time does not reflect who I am as a teacher. Something of that sort, like any sort of mantra that works for you. But I say mantras and I say some deep breaths. And often I'll even do this with the kids. Like I'll be like, oh, Right now, my brain is feeling a little overwhelmed by all the noise. I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna take three deep breaths and then when I open them, 
my brain will feel a little bit more calm and maybe the environment around me will be too. So I'm not really like saying, hey, quiet down, <laughs> but I am demonstrating how I'm going to use strategies to calm myself down. And then that often influences them to also use strategies to calm themselves down. But anyways, that's getting into strategies. So I guess second piece other than classroom community, the next thing that's important is that you have your own emotional regulation strategies that you can tap into if you are starting to feel frustrated or you need a moment because sometimes it can be hard. <laughs> okay, so let's talk strategies. Now, I feel like the strategies are broken into like two things. One's more of like a concrete thing that you can implement in your class. And then the other half is like a, just like mental things that you can do. So one of the concrete things is a using classroom attention getters. So some attention getters that I like to use are, I like to use a harmonica that's new to me this year, but it's a great sound that captivates kids' attention, but it doesn't like get them too rowdy after doing like a call and response. I also do a chime and when they hear the chime, they clap their hands and they breathe in and breathe out until they hear the last sound and then they put their hands on their head and they listen to me talk. I also do things like what Mrs. Call um, Campers does and I'll say my turn say your turn and then I'll say when it's my turn your job is to and they say listen and I say when you're listening your eyes are they say on your voices are off and you're ready to participate and then we we go on and that's just a good like verbal reminder of what they're supposed to be doing at the time so those are three things that come to mind with my attention getters and then the second thing that I enjoy that kind of keeps kids the classroom rolling well is using hand signals. So I do like this for a restroom, R for restroom. I'll do one for, I think, tissue, two for pencil, three for water, four for calm corner, five for I have a question. Then we do agree. And they do we do disagree. And then at the beginning of the year, they decided that we read the book bucket filler, bucket dipper. So they decided that when we are feeling our, like our buckets are filling, they'll do this. And when their buckets are dipping, they'll do this. Um, and that's, some of those things just come up in lessons. Like I like to use movements a lot in lessons. So that's a piece of classroom management is make sure that you're engaging your kids by adding movements and like whole brain teaching type things like repeating what you say because then they stick. But I guess that's a number three is engage your learners throughout your lessons and give them chances to talk, give them chances to move. Otherwise your management will struggle because the kids will have a hard time just sitting there and listening, which is reasonable. I have a hard time sitting and listening for a long period of time too. So give them a chance to repeat what you say, do mirrors on, like mirrors on. When I say, when I say, I don't know what I'm, where I'm going with this, but you see what I'm going with. Um, and then, like I said, it, I did a lesson one recently where they did news reporter voice or they were supposed to think of a storyteller voice and I just like added hand motions. So when they listen to the, story and me reading it they were supposed to show me if they thought that they were telling you facts and information like a news reporter or if they were telling you things that really helped you imagine it like a storyteller and they would show me that symbol and by having that chance to move it really engages them so that's number three now number four would be do some check-ins when you have a chance to now a check-in could be something like a just hey how are you doing i do something like i have three signs um i have a sign for the red zone the blue zone the green zone and the yellow zone and they're just the first letter of r b g and y um in asl and i'll have kids just show me what zones they're in and oftentimes they'll show me too. They'll be like, I'm in the blue zone and in the yellow zone or something like that. 
and then I'll check in and I'll say if anyone would like to share why they're feeling the way they're feeling, you can, you can. And I try and do that a few times throughout the day, but some days I'm better than others. But it's great to just stop and check in on how your kids are feeling. That way you can have an idea um, on who might be having a harder time and you can kind of check in with them a little bit more. Okay, more concrete things. I should also add like this year I am using punch cards and I'm like, I'll give them a punch if I notice that, or I should say stamp, whole punch, um, if they're following our classroom promises. And I try and say something like, I notice so-and-so is really working hard to keep our classroom clean and organized they're going to earn a punch. And I try and say something like I noticed instead of I like, because I don't want them to feel like they need to be people pleasing in the future. But anyways, I don't know that I will continue with those things in the future, but that's what I'm doing this year. And then if they earn those punches on their punch cards, they can get like free rewards, like stinky feet, teacher helper, um, they can bring a stuffy to school. They all cost a different amount of punch cards. So that's what I'm doing this year. I will say I'm not doing great at it. And it's because I don't know if I fully believe that it works. Like I kind of feel like the relationships and the other pieces are what really matters. And this is just an extra thing, but that's a whole nother conversation, <laughs> but that's the only, that's what I'm doing for like physical concrete stuff. So now moving on to more classroom management, but like more ideas based. I like to have some go-to phrases. Now for me, go-to phrases are things that I might just have like on my, in my back pocket. So I know when something like this comes up, I know what I might want to say. Like for example, when a kid makes a mistake, I'll say, oh my goodness, what awesome brain growth I'm seeing. That way you're kind of promoting that relationship and that off idea that they're making mistakes, but that mistakes help them learn. So I'll say, wow, your brain just grew so much. I just saw so much brain growth. That was amazing. And you try and celebrate the mistake because it helps them feel good about their learning and helps them understand that mistakes help them learn. I also will say things like, this feels hard because it is hard but you can do hard things when they're doing something hard. Um, I'll remind them a lot that learning is hard. It's not meant to be easy, but they can do hard things. So kind of connected to what I just said. I might say something like if they don't want to do something, like they don't want to do math, like two things are true. You don't want to do math today, but your job is to learn. And since you're here to learn, we need to do math. I'm sorry, <laughs> something like that. Like I'm acknowledging what they're feeling. And that's a big piece of what I wanna add is like acknowledge and validate their feelings, but then hold firm and continue to be that sturdy leader that you need to be in the classroom. Another thing that I'll say often is something that just connects back to our classroom jobs. Like if I notice someone is like, let's say interrupting or just doing something that's not allowing others to learn. I'll say something like, I noticed that you're you're continuing to blurt. I'm not gonna let you blurt anymore. You're really not allowing others to learn. So we need to come up with a plan that's going to help you to stop. And then the plan will be something like, if you continue to blurt, this is going to be, we're gonna need to take a break um, and get a drink of water. Like what strategies can we use to help us? It's not, a consequence but it's just like a strategy thinking session yeah so the next thing is i guess i put two but i guess this is like number six it's to just have the most generous interpretation of your students understand that these kids are good kids who are having a hard time so feel that empathy and understand that they may be doing this thing for a reason that is not so bad. Like my brain often immediately jumps to this kid is 
lying, they're being so nasty, <laughs> and it need, you need to stop and think, uh, let's think about this differently. Why? What's my most generous interpretation as to why this kid just did this? And my most generous interpretation may have been that this kid really wanted to help pick up the classroom and they went and threw something away and they didn't know that the person by the trash can had made this cre this thing that they would have been upset was thrown away for example so just really work to try and have that most generous interpretation and when you have the conversations Try to continue with that and listen to the kids and validate them as you're talking to them. You can say, I believe you and we need to be doing this. A lot of validation and recognition. Okay, next thing. I like to model behaviors. I like to make sure that I'm making mistakes and that I'm showing how I can regulate myself and how I can make mistakes and then move on from them. So I'll write something on the board and I'll say, hmm, I don't think that looks right. Huh, that stinks. Oh, you know what? I bet it spelt like this. Um, and I'll just kind of, you know, show that frustration. And then sometimes I'll add in some self-talk. <sighs> All right, perfect voice. I hear you, perfect, perfect. You always have to be perfect. It's okay. You're still doing your best, and your best is all that you can do. All right, I'm gonna keep writing. You know, I'll just like model what it would look like if I needed to come across a problem that students will often come across, like making mistakes in their writing and needing to spell something and not wanting to make that mistake, but needing to accept it and so on. So. That is another one. And then my last one is that you really just need to accept the help and reach out for help from administrators, from your colleagues, from parents um, when things are getting tricky. I remember in my first year, I didn't want to seem like I was a failing teacher. So I didn't want to admit that things were not going well and I just really needed some extra support. My mentor teacher came in, helped me, knew, told me kind of some strategies, and that really helped me. And these people want to assist you. So reach out and they will give you some strategies or tools or tricks, or if they don't have strategies or tools or tricks, they'll at least give you ways to support you. Like maybe one student's being incredibly difficult and they're just having a really hard time, then maybe the plan needs to be that if they continue to have this hard time and they are constantly interrupting the class, then they need to take a break from the class when they get to that point. And they need to go down to the office and get a break and so on. Um, so collaborate with your peers and with your administrators and with others so you can get ideas and supports that allow you to do your job and allow others to do their job. Okay, so there you go, there you have it. Those are my tips, tricks, thoughts on ways that you can work on classroom management and have just like a successful classroom community and classroom management. I hope you found this helpful today. I know some things were concrete, other things were just more like ideas and thoughts, but I really find both can be helpful sometimes. So I hope that you found this helpful. If you have suggestions for other things you'd like me to talk about, please comment down below and let me know other videos that you'd like me to make, or if something down that I've mentioned today sparks an idea, bring it up and let me know what you were thinking and how I can either use it in my classroom or what you enjoyed that I shared. So, yeah, if you have any other like classroom management type things that you feel like really help make your classroom roll, share them so other people in the comments can see them and they can try and implement them as well. Thank you so, so much for being here. I appreciate it with all my heart and I cannot wait to see you next week. Bye everyone. Mm -hmm.